Hi everyone, it's Shana with Dancing Daisy Designs and I'm starting a new project, so come along and check it out. So this is what it looks like when I'm getting started. Um, this is an old vintage dresser and it's really dirty, so I'm going to give it a good cleaning. And um, it looks like somebody painted it with just like some wall paint and then used like a marker and went in and like tried to trace all of the details. There's a little bit of carved detail there. So um, this definitely needs an update. Inside the drawers, um, they had also put in paper and the paper <laughs> was really stuck in there. I think it's been there for a very long time. I tried to scrape it out with the razor and that wasn't working and so I added some water and it came right off and this was so satisfying just to peel off strips of paper like that I have to tell you <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and sand the paint off the top on this and of course it helps if you plug in the sander um, there we go so I'm going to just sand the paint off um, I decided that I wanted to tone this I think that'll be a really cute vintage look and so um, I've got 80 grit sandpaper on here and I'm just going to um, take like an hour or so and sand off the top of this um, down to the wood. And then I'm going to go back over it with 220 just to smooth it out, make sure I have a nice smooth surface to work with. Mixing up my milk paint, I'm going to be using the color basil, and this is what the color looks like. It's like a nice dark green, perfect for fall, and I'm using Sweet Pickens milk paint, and um, this is actually a powdered paint, so I'm going to get that mixed up, and basically what you want to do, you want to mix one part paint to one part water, and so I'm just going to pour some of this powder into a container here and that looks good all right so i've got about that much powder in there it's maybe close to a cup i would say and then i've also got warm water so you want to mix equal parts paint to water so i'm just going to pour some water in and maybe a little bit more and that looks good. So I've got my water in there. And now I'm going to use an immersion blender and I'm just going to mix it up with that. You could also use a fork or a um, something like that. You just want to kind of get all the clumps out. about 10 minutes before you use it and it's going to thicken up just a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to add some extra bond and extra bond is basically just a bonding agent that you can use with this milk paint just to help it stick um, better to the surface. Um, recommended use is um, two parts paint, one part bond. Um, I put a little less than that because I don't think the surface that I'm using is really going to be that big of a problem. All right. So I'm just going to let that sit for about 10 minutes. The paint's been sitting for about five minutes, and I'm just going to go for it. I'm being impatient. So, really simple. You're just going to put your coats on until you're happy with your coverage. This one's probably gonna take two coats. The first coat is always just kind of a little bit streaky and stuff, so don't worry about that because it'll be resolved in the second coat for sure. This dresser is really a lot of drawer, like there's a lot of drawer going on, so there's not much to look at right here. Make you smile, don't 
So I've got two coats on and it's dry. I actually did like a third, a little bit of a touch up here and there. As you can see, like in this spot right here, and then down here a little bit, I also did like a little touch up. So um, hoping that's not gonna show through the sealer when I do it. Um, I haven't had to do that with milk paint before. Uh, this was an acrylic paint and so the base was kind of slippery. And so I should have scuff sanded it, but I didn't. So this is the product I'm gonna use to top coat the base down here. And this is Sweet Pickens Top Coat in Matte. And I want a matte look because I like like that authentic aged vintage kind of look. And then the top here is gonna get a stain. And I left some of the color variation here when I sanded it down. Um, I like that look. I feel like it gives you more of that, that like old antique kind of feel. So let's get started with the base coat. I'm out here in my garage today and it's really hot. And so, and then um, I don't have much space. So I'm kind of in the craft in this little corner. As you can see, my backdrop is a sheet. That's because I have way too much stuff going on out here that I need to work on. So I'm excited to get this project finished up so that I can keep working my way through some of the stuff I've got going on out here. So I'm probably gonna apply two coats of the, um, the matte top coat, and then I'll stick the drawers in and everything and like reassess once I have the top stained and then decide if I'm gonna do brown wax or not, so. I'm just gonna get this done and then we'll see what happens from there. <laughs> This is the point where I should have realized that something was not looking right with this top coat finish that I'm working on. Um, it was very hot in the garage, like I said, and then the top coat was kind of thick. I totally should have watered it down. What was I thinking? Well, stay tuned and I'll show you what, what happened when it dried and how I'm gonna fix it. Now it's time to stain the top and I'm just using a water-based stain that you can get at the hardware store and I just, um, this is the color I had, so this is the color I'm going with. I like to apply it with a brush and then I um, wipe it back with a soft dry rag. Here I'm using the same top coat to seal the top of this. Um, I let the stain dry completely overnight. It probably had like close to 24 hours to dry. Note that I watered down the sealer because I had realized it was quite thick. And um, I'm now applying it. I'm gonna apply two to three coats on the top. I like to do a little extra on the top um, just because it gets more use and you never know um, how somebody's gonna use this. So you gotta make sure that it's nice and well sealed. When I sealed this piece, it was too hot. And so I got like a haze on my piece here. And you can see it here, that's what this is, like this kind of white looking stuff. And so um, because of the color of the top and everything, I took another look at it. I decided that I'm going to dark wax over it. And I think it's going to take care of that and make it look amazing. I'm using DIY um, paint product in uh, dark wax. And it's a really nice creamy wax. And I'm going to be using this. Waxing is really easy. You just get some wax on your brush, just like that. 
and you basically just smear it over the whole thing just like this and you can let it sit a little bit or you can wipe it off immediately this is a little drawer so I'm going to do the top and the sides before I wipe it and um me personally like whenever i use any of the colored waxes i like to put down a top coat first or clear wax because it acts as a little bit of a barrier and um, that way if it's too dark then you can wipe it back pretty easy and it's not just going to stay that super dark color so this is what it looks like oops this is what it looks like with the dark wax on and now i'm just going to wipe it back And you can wipe it back a lot. You can wipe it back a little. You can add more wax in areas. And um, all of this will help manipulate like what you get on there. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more here on the top. And if you just leave the wax on and you don't wipe it back, then it's gonna dry like that. So keep that in mind as far as um, playing with the darkness and kind of like the look that you want. I just want to make sure that we don't see that haze. So I just wiped it back the way that I want it. And I'm just going to leave it and let that dry. And so this is kind of, you can see the difference here. So this one is dark and then this one is just with the regular clear. Can you get that? So it's just a subtle difference. It's not dramatic. If I put more wax on, I could make it more dramatic. Um, if you do dark wax over a clear wax, it does turn out a little bit darker just because the wax, it's got a little bit more to grab onto. So I'm just gonna let that dry. I'm gonna work on the rest of these drawers and get the whole piece done like this. Yeah, we're a little messed up, baby, kind of up and down And we keep falling till we hit the ground And then we, we always get back up again We're a little messed up, baby, kind of up and down And we keep falling till we hit the ground But then we, oh, we get back up again Yeah, we're a little messed up, baby It's never getting boring when we keep dreaming for the stars just So here's another example of that haze I was talking about and how it doesn't look great. I really don't want to repaint the whole thing. That is an option, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to just do the dark wax and I'm going to show you this is a really good example of how it changes the look. See the difference? What a difference that makes. And that's your difference. Um, when it dries, it's gonna lighten up just slightly, but not much. And so that's what we're achieving with the brown wax. It's hiding a lot of that white that came out and bringing back our green. Here's what it looks like with the wax all on it and it's all ready and cute. Notice how I put a little extra wax on like the edges of the drawers and stuff where it would naturally um, get that like aged, like not dirty, but just like more patina. And then here I have uh, the knobs that I decided to go with. The hardware that was already on there, one of them did not match and so I had to find new hardware so I came up with this um, and then I got these three little like um, dangle pulls and um, put, added a little gold wax to them and it looks so cute and really quick here's a picture of the back because I thought it was like you could really see the age here and I thought it was so amazing so I just left that alone let me know what you think about that would you have painted the back or left it alone comment below Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope that you enjoyed the project that I worked on. I think the dresser turned out really cute. 
Um, if you need any of the paint and products that I used in this video, you can find all of those at dancingdaisydesigns.com. And also, if you're not subscribed to my channel already, please consider subscribing. It really helps my small business out a lot. Um, click the bell notification so that you are notified every time I come out with a new video. Um, I'm also on Facebook and Instagram, so if you're on there, give me a follow. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.